De vierde zomergast van dit seizoen is de Belgische toponderzoekster Christine van Broekhoven. Ik ben een zoekende geest en een onderzoek. Ik wil alles weten. Ik wil het waarom weten. Je hebt ook een filmpje eigenlijk meegebracht. Het is een beetje een educatieve omroep, maar het, het maakt het wel heel goed ja. duidelijk. Hersenen zijn ons meest persoonlijke orgaan. Al ons voelen, denken en doen wordt door de hersenen aangestuurd. Zij vormen het grote regelmechanisme in ons lichaam. Het is een orgaan dat bestaat uit nog geen 1500 gram hersenweefsel... ...waarin zich miljarden zenuwcellen bevinden, in totaal wel 100 miljard. The brain is made up of tiny nerve cells called neurons. These neurons have tiny branches that reach out and connect to other neurons to form a neural net. Each place where they connect is integrated into a thought or a memory. Now the brain builds up all its concepts by the law of associative memory. For example, ideas, thoughts and feelings are all constructed and interconnected in this neural net and all have a possible relationship with one another. The concept and the feeling of love, for instance, is stored in this vast neural net. But we build the concept of love from many other different ideas. Some people have love connected to disappointment. When they think about love, they experience the memory of pain, sorrow, anger, and even rage. Rage may be linked to hurt, which may be linked to a specific person, which then is connected back to love. Any information that we process, any information that we take in from the environment, is always colored by the experiences that we've had. Who is in the driver's seat when we control our emotions or we respond to our emotions? We know physiologically that nerve cells that fire together, wire together. If you practice something over and over again, those nerve cells have a long-term relationship. If you get angry on a daily basis, if you get frustrated on a daily basis, if you suffer on a daily basis, if you give reasons for the victimization in your life, you're rewiring and reintegrating that neural net on a daily basis, and that neural net now has a long-term relationship with all those other nerve cells called an identity. We also know that nerve cells that don't fire together no longer wire together. They lose their long-term relationship because every time we interrupt the thought process that produces a chemical response in the body, every time we interrupt it, those nerve cells that are connected to each other start breaking the long-term relationship. When we start interrupting and observing not by stimulus and response and that automatic reaction, but by observing the effects it takes, then we are no longer the body, mind, conscious, emotional person that's responding to its environment as if it is automatic. De dood. We gaan het hebben over de dood. Oei, dat is een hele stel. Waarom celdood, dat een cel op een gegeven moment eigenlijk besluit te sterven, Waarom dat zo lang aan de aandacht is ontsnapt van heel veel uh, mensen die het moesten bezoeken, wetenschappers. Okay. Death by Design heet het. Yes, I think that when you're dealing with death, whether it be a cell or an organism, it's just, you know, it's kind of reminding you of your own mortality. This is the great human problem, is coming to grips with your own death. I think there probably was something about that, you yeah, know, psychological explanation. Io ho fatto un esperimento sull'embrione di pollo che mi ha portato alla scoperta della morte della cellula nervosa. Un embrione di pollo naturalmente è una creaturina molto piccola con due abbozzi che sono gli arti, l'ala e la zampa. Tagliando con un ago uno di questi abbozzi, l'ala o l'arto, io mi sono resa conto che le cellule nervose che avevano iniziato a svilupparsi morivano. E da questo io sono arrivata alla conclusione che la cellula nervosa ha bisogno di qualche stimolo ed era il tessuto o qualche nutriente che veniva dal tessuto. Mancando questo tessuto periferico, l'abbozzo dell'arto o dell'ala, le cellule vanno incontro a morte e quella è la prima dimostrazione di una degenerazione cellulare perché la cellula nervosa in via di sviluppo non riceve messaggi dalla periferia che mancano. È stata una scoperta al momento sconvolgente. Io venivo dalla terribile esperienza della guerra, dai campi di battaglia, della morte. Io vedo queste cellule morire come i soldati in guerra. Per me era un riferimento a quello che è la vita normale, la vita tra gli uomini. In me prevale 
la capacità intuitiva su quella raziocinante. Quindi è più un modo artistico di portare avanti il mio lavoro che un modo cosiddetto scientifico. Per me è il gehoeu che è il mens. Il è il gehoeu e il gehoeu è il mens. Il gehoeu lascia tu il leven te herinneren, iets typisch voor mensen, mensen hebben herinneringen, maar laat ook toe om je, je leven te organiseren. Emotions, and emotions are us. Again, I can't separate emotions. When you consider that um, every aspect of your digestion, every sphincter that opens and closes, every group of cells that come in for nourishment and then moves out to um, heal something or repair something, Those are all under the influence of the molecules of emotion. I mean, it's this total buzz. Each cell is definitely alive, and uh, each cell has a con. In fact, the cell is the smallest unit of consciousness in the body. A receptor that has a peptide sitting in it um, changes the cell in many ways. It sets off a whole cascade of biochemical events, some of which wind up with changes in the actual nucleus of the cell. Is that most of us who've had our glitches along the way are operating in a emotionally detached place, or we're operating as if today were yesterday. In either the disconnected place or the overly emotional reactive place, because they've gone to an earlier time in reality, the person is not operating as an integrated whole. Dus bijvoorbeeld met depressie als als hersenwetenschapper en ik heb ook jaren gewerkt en nog rond genetica van depressie, weet ik dat daar iets kan aan gedaan worden. Dat de medicatie de dag van vandaag onvoldoende werkt of zelfs niet werkt. De meeste medicatie werken niet. Sommige mensen horen dat niet graag als ik dat zeg. Maar het is niet ik die dat zeg. Het wordt geschreven in topvakbladen. Maar, dus je moet zoeken naar een therapeut waar je als mens uh, je goed bij voelt en waar je mee werkelijk uh, iets aan hebt. Door mijn kracht, door weer met mijn hersenen, door te denken over mijn hersenen en over het ziekteproces en erover te praten, meer met mensen, uh, leken, ben ik langzaam maar zeker tot een oplossing gekomen. Dat is trouwens de manier waarop ik werk. Als ik een probleem heb, dan begin ik daarover te denken, voor, tegen afwegen, ronddraaien, nog een keer omkeren. En ik ga daarmee om tot ik een voor mij bevredigende oplossing heb. En dan kan ik er even met verder. DNA is niet just een molecule, het is de blueprint voor life. In one of the most famous understatements in science, Crick and Watson wrote, It has not escaped our notice that the specific pairing we have postulated immediately suggests a possible copying mechanism for the genetic material. And in another eureka moment, the structure rewarded them with the immediate realization of how DNA replicates. Unzipping the helix produces two templates to create two new helices, each identical to the original. We're bombarding the cell with the same attitude and the same chemistry over and over again on a daily basis. When that cell finally decides to divide, when it produces a sister cell or a daughter cell, that next cell will have more receptor sites for those particular emotional neuropeptides and less receptor sites for vitamins, minerals, nutrients, fluid exchange, or even the release of waste products or toxins. Now, all aging is a result of improper protein production. What happens when we age? Does it really matter what we eat? And does nutrition really have an effect if the cell doesn't even have the receptor sites after 20 years of emotional abuse?